Angel snuffing up seven. Why are you so damn angry? Why you stay mad all the time? <laughs> folks, some folks tell me that. I am angry. I am upset. I am. But it's more, I am frustrated and I am disappointed in the people that I am birthed from. And folks are always trying to compare us to others. Our experience is different. You, you cannot expect us to behave and act like other people who have not, who have not suffered over 300 years of being a slave. And that's all you know. Over 300 years, you was denied the right to take care of yourself. You was denied education and, and other things that make you a human being. Our ancestors was treated like animals. So, I did, and I was angry at my people, the people that I'm born from. I was angry and upset until I began to concentrate and understand the why, the why, and why it's not that simple. I cannot expect these to be like me. I am rare. And people like me existed in very small numbers. We were rare and we would be killed. We would be lynched. We would be outright murdered. Our type of, of behavior would not be tolerated. This is facts. So we go back to a time after 300 years or more of physical bondage, my ancestors, After this great war, they call the Civil War. And then General Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant, which brought an end to the Civil War. The news got out throughout the land, and they did not have the internet. They didn't have you know, social media, television, radio. The word went across the country, newspapers, telegraph, that the so-called Negro, you ain't slaves no more. You are now free. You have no slave master. Now, just saying this out of our mouth, it is easy because we, we've never been a slave. We've never lived on a plantation, and we don't understand the concept of slavery. I mean, we talk, we don't understand what it is to be a slave. Some of us who have been incarcerated, some of us who have spent long time in jail or prison, you probably can understand more so than the average person. Slavery was a institution. Thus, we get the word institutionalized. When people come from jail and prison, a lot of times we say they are 
institutionalized. They carried the behaviors or whatever they was doing because they were locked up. Here, our ancestors was in a situation and of course, they're going to continue, they're going to behave in the manner, in the way that they know being institutionalized in a system over 300 years. Now also, we must take note, this was freedom that they did not fight for. This is very important for us to understand. This was a freedom the majority of them could care less about. This must be understood. Within the 300 year or more period of actual physical enslavement, you had a few rebellions, you had a few runaways. If these people had the mindset like many of us have in 2022, slavery would have ended. Matter of fact, it would never have gotten started. Y'all heard of a zebra, right? Now, if you think there wasn't an effort to domesticate the zebra, you're wrong. The problem is the zebra refused to be domesticated. And the zebra caused too much trouble than what the zebra was worth to try to make it domesticated. That's why you don't see folks run around riding on zebras because zebras ain't going for it. And there's a lot of animals that refuse to be domesticated. However, in our situation, we are a product of domestication. We are the descendants of people who were broken, destroyed, and they bred and brought us into being. We were, or we are products of domestication. We have no idea of what it means to be free. So when they told us, our ancestors, they were free, they were like, okay. There's no real celebration because, you know, what I'm going to do with it? And of course, our enemies, they didn't help them none. They were, on, they were uh, made to survive on their own merit or device. How am I going to live? Many of them in, stayed on the slave plant. I was born. I was born on a slave plantation. Many, and, and this was 1960s. And there are people who are born on slave plantations in 2022. Slave plantations, of course, they don't operate <laughs> like slave plantations, but slave plantations still exist. So you have a people. They were not sentenced to go to jail. They were already born. We are a people that was born in the jail. What we know about being free. We was born in the jail for 300 years. So how can I get angry at the people that I'm coming from? They don't understand because this is all you know. It's just like your dog. Your dog has no idea how to live wild. Your dog is used to living with you in the house and going out on a leash and all that kind of good stuff. That's all they know. They was they was not born. They have no idea. They've never been in the wild. In the 1960s, there was about 15 to 20 million soul brothers and sisters in this country. Only a few a small few participated 
in what we call the Black Revolution, participated in what we call the Civil Rights Era. The majority didn't care. Leading white folks along, we's doing it all right. That's the attitude. Because, don't get angry. That's all they knew. That's all they know. They learn how to live with Jim Crow. They learn how to live with the slave master. They learn how to live in oppression. And before you make mockery, or before I make mockery of our ancestors, none of us are above them. You do the same thing. You're not going to your truck and get you a, a gun and talk about revolution and, and what. You're doing the same thing. You're institutionalized. You want to go to Disneyland. You want to call yourself a revolutionary. And you want to go to Disneyland and you want to go to the movies and pop popcorn. And you ain't, you know, you're a black revolutionary, hotel, black power. You talking all this old stuff. Like you tough, you not you, you ain't no better than what our ancestors was when they came fresh off the plantation. Because if we were really serious about our freedom and our liberation, it would have been done a long time ago. And we would begin the, the respect, whether they like it or not. We would begin the reparations, whether they like it or not, that we deserve. But you really don't care like that because you don't know what freedom is. If we understood what freedom is, then we would fight for it. We don't fight for freedom. We don't fight for liberation like we should. I mean, we talk. We talk a good game. Y'all good talkers. But you won't, you won't stand up and fight for what you rightly deserve because you never had it. So you really don't know what you're fighting for. So you don't know what you're fighting for. You can't miss what you never had. So the majority of black people, so brothers and sisters in this country, you can talk all that black power stuff and Reparation stuff, and you can talk say you can you can you can talk to you black and blue in the face, however you want to say it. They don't care. The majority don't care. They're used to living an institutionalized lifestyle. Their only example of freedom is Caucasian people, white folks. They've never lived in Africa. They never lived in Asia. They never lived independent. When our ancestors came fresh off the slave plantation, their only example of freedom, their only example of life was the slave master and his children. Nothing has changed in 2022. Now, some of you might think that you're better. Only thing you want to do is copy somebody else. You don't want to mimic the white man no more, but you want to just go from his plantation to another plantation. You know, the Hebrew Israelite plantation, the Kemetic plantation, the black Muslim plantation. You just want to change plantations. But when it's all said and done, because it's all that you know, you live in a life of a European. That's all you ever know going on 500 years. I don't care what kind of costumes you put on. I don't care how much you holler hotel and black power and wearing dashikis. You are what you are. And that's why I don't get upset and angry. I understand. I will try to talk to make you understand. But like they always tell me, it is what it is. <laughs>